What's up guys, Dom here from Faith Family Homestead and today we are out in the garden. I am doing a voiceover for this first minute because I realized that I didn't turn on my speaker or my mic. So we had two nights where it got down to 36 degrees and one of the uh, mornings I came out and I saw that there was some frost on some of the leaves of the plants but not on any of the plants that I didn't want to freeze like the potatoes or tomatoes. Those were actually perfect. It was actually on the squash plant that um, has it was kind of like a volunteer and so uh, and that's up towards the front and we're at the sweet potato bed that did get some frost and I'll turn around and show you. So all of these sweet potatoes that have this black leaves that is from uh, frost damage as you can see but there are some that are looking perfectly uh, good and so we are actually going to be um, harvesting the sweet potatoes today and uh, saving some of the leaves. I have seen some sweet potatoes already poking out in the ground and so I am hopeful to uh, find some pretty decent sized sweet potatoes in this bed. This kakuzi plant is not showing any signs of frost damage which is amazing and it actually has two kakuzis growing and I will harvest those. These are dragon tongue uh, pole beans which does not look like they are affected by the frost. Um, I, were, I was leaving these to dry and save seeds and there are some seeds in there and so I'll continue to leave these to continue to dry. The pole beans over here is not affected at all by the uh, freeze. There is no sign of frost damage on these pole beans and actually they are starting to form beans and they have lots of white flowers right there and little baby beans that's so cute. Our uh, estimated first frost wasn't supposed to be till November 2nd. Last year it didn't come until November 23rd. This time we did have a, you know, kind of a freeze uh, the last two nights. Um, but a lot of the plants that are frost hardy did not uh, receive any damage. And so I'm really happy about that. And then in the next two weeks, we don't have a frost anywhere in the forecast. And so I'm looking forward to getting a harvest off of these pole beans. Surprisingly enough, these uh, this hot pepper bed did not receive any frost damage at all. The peppers are still going strong. I did um, one of the viewers said that I should try and overwinter them in ground and I think that's a wonderful idea and so I am going to try and leave them in ground over winter and see if I could just put over like plastic or something over this bed. I am going to cut back the basil and see if I can overwinter them in this bed. I think that that would be a fun experiment to see if uh, the peppers could stay inside that bed all um, winter long. We don't get really, really hard freezes last year. I think the coldest it got down to was 26 degrees. And so maybe I can um, overwinter those peppers just straight in ground um, as long as, you know, they don't die. If they slow down on growth or pause on growing, um, which plants do when the days get shorter and um, I think that that would be fine, but as long as I don't kill them or the ground doesn't kill them uh, between a hard freeze, I think that I can do it. So I'm going to experiment and see if I can overwinter those peppers in ground. These bush beans, my daughter plants, I think they were called Painted Pony. This is actually caterpillar poop there. But anyway, so yeah, these are called Painted Pony, I think, and there are actually beans ready to harvest and I didn't even know some right here on the ground that's so cool this was one of the tomato plants that I planted as a second wave as you can see there's still lots of flowers on there lots of tomatoes um, this one has a hole in it but the rest are fine and you can see no frost damage on those this is the third spot that I have sweet potatoes planted and you can see lots of damage all the blackening of the leaves here and so we'll dig those out today as well this was actually the bed that i saw uh, had the frost on them and you can see the leaves have turned black so i will go ahead i think there's three fruit here yeah there's one there a squash there and a squash here so we'll go ahead and get those as well today too but the potatoes is the thing that I wanted to protect because they're still young and I knew that they wouldn't be potatoes ready and as you can see 
they are doing fine. And I actually didn't cover them. They just did that way. Protected themselves. Potatoes can actually get a little cold. But if it gets like a really hard freeze, they will freeze. But as long as the tubers don't freeze, then they can come back. Uh, one year... I planted potatoes too early and then um, it had a hard freeze when we were living in Kentucky and I had planted them in containers and the tops died back but then uh, it regrew and so even if those potatoes the tops were to grow back um, the potatoes could potentially still um, sprout back but it would obviously just take longer for a hard Yay I'm so excited my first sugar snap pea that I see coming up. <laughs> These are tomato plants and I just saw some more over here oh another one yay happy birthday I had my daughter plant these sugar snap peas and some of them are these aren't too bad but some of them are really really far away from the trellis <laughs> the trellis is right here so some of them are far, far away. We'll see. But you can see even the marigolds are still kicking it, still blooming. I still have a zinnia over there that wasn't affected. I did show this yesterday. <laughs> this is my broccoli bed. Uh, most of my broccolis, I do have some broccolis other places. But the broccolis are on this side are ginormous. And then as you go down, they get shorter and smaller. I'm not sure why that is. Um, there is a slope. And so I'm wondering if it has something to do with drainage. Um, because they just get gradually smaller until we get all the way here. And I did plant those... Um, all of these broccolis at the same time. I transplanted them all at the same time and so they should be growing all at the same time. And of course the cabbages are loving this weather. You can see they have some dew on them. This is the whole row of tomatoes that I saw lots and lots of green tomatoes on them and you can see they're still alive. I have not pruned or picked these up. They would be I would be very happy to have them, but I'm not going to do anything special to them. Just going to wait and hopefully harvest tomatoes from them. So anyway, now that we've checked on the garden really quick, let's go and start harvesting sweet potatoes. I think what I'm going to do is pull out all of the vines by snipping them at the base and remove them so that I can dig out the sweet potatoes and then um, if there's any... I'll have probably my daughters help me by pulling off like the nice leaves like this that have like no damage to them because you can eat sweet potato leaves and I am actually thinking about canning them and using them like spinach. So I finally got all the sweet potato leaves out of this bed. You can see there's a sweet potato right here already poking out one here. So that makes me really excited that there's actually sweet potatoes in here. Um, that was a lot of work. I'm kind of out of breath. So now I am just going to start digging for treasure. And that is an awesome size one. That's amazing. So let's keep digging and see what else we find in here. I just broke the top off of that one. But there's a whole cluster actually right here because there are, let me see if I can just, oh wow, there's like five that were together. Because this one was with it, this one, and there's one over here. Oh wow, this one's the biggest one. <laughs> oh no, another one. 
That one has a crack in it right there, but oh, wow. Six sweet potatoes. Uh, this was a cluster all together. So that was all from this one plant right here. Let's hope that we have more sweet potatoes in this bed and that that wasn't the end of the excitement. Found another one here. Oh. Now that is probably the longest one. Yeah, it's the longest one. better I'm so excited so if you are new here I started out all these beds no dig this uh, bed specifically had um, store-bought potatoes in the spring growing here and then I planted it with sweet potatoes sweet potatoes even though they're called a potato is actually not in the potato family Potatoes and tomatoes are actually in the same family in nightshade. A sweet potato is actually a morning glory in the morning glory family. So, just in case you were wondering. As you can see, I just found a <laughs> potato. It does have some damage right there, but I planted organic store-bought potatoes in this bed and I just harvested a potato. These sweet potatoes were grown from store-bought sweet potatoes as well. I got them from Earth Fair. Some were organic. I had organic sweet potato. Uh, um, I think the regular sweet orange sweet potato was organic too. And then I got two Japanese yams. Um, I'll have to throw in a picture of what the names were because I don't remember. I just remember I got four different varieties and this is my first orange sweet potato. And I'm thinking these are, because they have like that flesh right there and so this, uh, the yellow flesh. And so I'm assuming this is the yam, but I'm not exactly sure. Sweet potatoes actually need to be cured for two weeks before you use them. They need high heat and high humidity. So to do this, I'm gonna place them in a plastic bag, do some holes in them, and that should uh, imitate high heat, high humidity. So I am going to bring them in the house, put them in the plastic bag, put the holes in it, and cure them that way. So I had to do an outfit change. It started getting hot and the sun was burning me. But let me show you how much sweet potatoes we have so far. So I bought off this basket because I wasn't sure how many sweet potatoes we're gonna get but obviously I need um, a bigger container surprisingly though we only found this one potato um, in the ground and then where is that orange sweet potato oh and then one actual orange sweet potato the rest of these are either the organic purple sweet potatoes or the yam so I find that very interesting that I actually only got one orange regular sweet potato um so i don't know i finished digging the whole bed but i am going to go one more time and just dig through uh some of these roots were definitely growing <laughs> some of these roots were growing um the roots were growing underneath the bed and into the ground, um, surrounding ground, and so I had to break those off. They were like the long ones like this. They were definitely going underneath the bed. 
Some of them were was even growing into the ground, which is nice because this was a no dig bed and these beds are only six inches high and they weren't even filled to the top. So they probably only had about four inches of soil once we moved those leaves. And so it's nice to know that the cardboard and the ground underneath is breaking up um, and getting soft. I did call him back up and hi Nehemiah. Hi. And Nehemiah and Anaya, hi. hi. Uh, is already starting to take the sweet potato leaves I don't want that one but the sweet potato leaves I told them that looked good only had just maybe one little dot on it not that one so I'll definitely have to go through these and see which ones I'm going to keep but I'm glad that they are working on that this is a perfect example you can see the end of the bed is right about here and it's level with the end of the bed and there's a sweet potato. <laughs> that looks big. It is big. I just found another potato and this one was actually sprouting. I'm just gonna plant that one back in there. Okay, I went ahead and switched baskets with my daughters because I needed this basket. This uh this one was not going to do. So I have this three quarters. This is a bushel. I just broke this with a shovel. This has been our longest sweet potato. It is a forearm on me. <laughs> um, but yeah, so this is all from this bed right here. We still have one other place towards the front that I, or towards the back, that I need to go ahead and get. So I was digging how to sweet potato bed and I saw something, found something cool that I wanted to show you guys. So this is what I was talking about where I'm pulling sweet potato vines and how they're growing underneath the um, bed because I started pulling and look, <laughs> the sweet potato is growing from underground <laughs> into the mulch. I just thought that was so cool. Okay, so it is definitely hot out here. This is gonna be the end. I have harvested all of the sweet potatoes out of the three beds. The sweet potatoes in this bed were much more uh, fat like this. And you can see that they did split. A lot of them that were fat like this did split. And I realized that this soil in this particular bed um, was much more, uh, uh what is it called clay there's lots of clay in this bed and so it was holding on to way more moisture than the bed uh, up front and so i'm definitely and it hasn't rained and i haven't watered this bed and so the soil was definitely more damp and so that's my conclusion as to why uh, the sweet potatoes were much uh chunkier and a lot of them that were chunky split open but I'm still happy with the harvest. These sweet potato slips that I put in here were, they looked, uh, when I planted them here, they did not look like they were gonna survive. They had lots of holes in them. And I literally just planted them and was like, we'll see what happens. And we got a good amount of sweet potato harvest from here. So definitely happy. That has a hole, so. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. Subscribe. Subscribe for your team.